Hey everyone, Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge. The purpose of this video today is to talk about the latest Supreme Court ruling on the Second Amendment, a majority written by Clarence Thomas. Let's go ahead and get started. Guys, as I'm sure if you've been paying attention, you'll know that the Bruin case of the Supreme Court's already been decided by the uh, majority 6-3. Uh, once again, uh, the, the people dissenting are Breyer, Sotomayor, and Kagan. Mental midgets, if I've ever seen any when it comes to the Second Amendment. Uh, very good case. I, I really like Justice Thomas's opinion. Uh, guys, I'm not going to get into the weeds as to what the specifics are, but just let me summarize it for you. I know many of you watching out there could care less about legal terms. I know uh, I, it's very tedious for me to actually decipher through it. It was uh, over 60 pages of the majority opinion, then of course 50 plus page in the dissent. So uh, I've read a lot of it, but here are the, the highlights of it. Justice Thomas wrote in the majority that that the New York shall issue or that a little, you have to like justify yourself before them, that's gone. Uh, the Second Amendment is a constitutional right just like any other. He specifically invokes uh, the First Amendment, the Sixth Amendment. And although this is a Second Amendment case, I think the big deal about this is that Justice Thomas brought in the 14th Amendment on this. And let's stop before we get in the weeds on this, but let's think about this. Gun control laws in this country have traditionally been against political opposition. Like whatever the people in power, whoever their political opposition was, that's why those gun control laws were enacted. This is especially true. And I want you to think about how the American experiment in a constitutional republic, how, how significant this is. Gun control laws in the past overwhelmingly passed against black Americans, preventing them from, from having a voice uh, in many states, uh, preventing them from exercising their right to self-protection, guaranteed to them under the Second Amendment, later codified in the 14th. But I want you to think about the significance of this. The people that traditionally had gun control and the first gun control laws were black Americans. Who wrote this majority opinion? Justice Thomas. What an amazing day for this nation. And I think that this makes whole, I got goosebumps even thinking about it. This completes the 14th Amendment, if you really think about it. And, and the 14th is such an incredible thing. It, it guarantees an individual rights, no matter which state you're in, no, no, matter, uh, no matter any other criteria, that's what it does. And now let's talk about some things. And, and this is a good time to celebrate that not only is the Second Amendment, the keep part has been decided by Heller and McDonald. The, the keeping part of the, the right of people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So the keep has already been decided. This decided the bearing part because what this case does was that it guaranteed a right for people to bear arms outside of their home. And that's what the heart of this decision is. And not only can you bear arms outside of your home, but any other legislation that needs to be passed or that they want to pass from this point forward must meet the strict scrutiny standard, which means from now on, if courts want to pass some of this stuff, that they have to have a specific example in history where, the, where a similar or same piece of legislation has been tried. They won't be able to do this, guys, because there aren't any historic examples of gun control. The Magnus Opus part of this is they struck down the Sullivan Act as unconstitutional. And you guys can look up what the Sullivan Act is. I'm not going to get into it here. This is a time for celebration. And with a time for celebration comes time for reflection. Let's reflect on what this case will mean moving forward. What I believe this case will be moving forward is the permit process. Now every state is shall issue. There's no more conditions. There's no more, oh, you have to justify yourself before some sheriff. You don't have to justify yourself before, justify yourself before the state. So now it's every state shall issue. Now, of course, the issue is how much does it cost to get that permit? Waiving fees moving forward. If the Second Amendment is a right just like any other one, and that means that the right to uh, the First Amendment, if I go to another state, how much will it cost me to attend a church service? How much will it attend me? How much will they charge me to wear a Star of David or a cross around my neck, depending on what you practice? How much do you have to pay to do that? The answer is zero. So now we have to address that point. Then we also have to address the point of, if I have a permit in one state, I'm good in literally four-fifths of the, of the entire country. But what if I go to the 20% the, uh, of the rest of the places? If I go to California, if I go to New York, if I go to Massachusetts, if I go to Rhode Island, if I go to Hawaii, what remedy does anybody have? And this is important. Gun rights organizations right now, they should have class action lawsuits against these states that prevent people from going in there and exercise their Second Amendment. 
The 14th Amendment specifically states that we shall not be prevented from enjoying citizenship of all the other rights that, we're enjo that we enjoy under the Constitution, that no state can deny us those rights. And that's the huge thing about this case. There's so much more that needs to be done, and I think it will be. You know, a few years ago, people thought I was crazy that all 50 states, I, I made the prediction that all 50 states would be, would have a, a, a concealed carry permit. Now, over half of the states have permitless carry. With this decision by Justice Thomas and the majority of the justices, what that brings into reality is that every state now is shall issue. I said this a couple of years, and many people laughed, oh, there's no way that's gonna happen. Well, it did happen. Like, I hate this defeatist attitude by so many people. I hate this defeatist attitude, oh, we can't do anything. Well, if that's your attitude, I sure as hell wouldn't want to be in a foxhole with you. Uh, I like can-do attitude people, uh, people that push this and move the ball down the, uh, down, the, down, the, down the yard lines towards the end zone. And what we're looking at here is that this stuff isn't going to get fixed overnight. But I will tell you this, this is the biggest Second Amendment case of my lifetime because not only has the keep part of the Second Amendment been upheld, but the bearing of arms has been upheld. And now it's up to the specifics. And I think we really need to get on the offensive on this. So Gun Owners of America, you need to really push these lawsuits forward in states that prevent people from going forward. For example, uh, my home state is Illinois. I was born there, but I've lived in the South almost half my life. But I grew up in Illinois, I was born there. Uh, if I wanted to go home and visit my parents or my family, if I wanted to go home and visit some friends, I do not, as a resident of Tennessee, I do, and we're, we're permitless carry in Tennessee. If I wanted to go home to Illinois and visit all those people, I don't have an option of exercising my Second Amendment. There's not even a non-resident option for Illinois. So the moment that I go into there, I can't do that. So according to this ruling, there's no way that Illinois can do that. So we need to hash this stuff out. Just some examples to think about. Just some examples of the issues that will be reconciled and under the new strict scrutiny standard, I think you're gonna find that a lot of the traditional gun control laws are going to be wiped off the books and all those stupid little lawyers in New York and California and anywhere else, they're gonna find themselves in hot water due to this new strict uh, scrutiny standard. And this is a good day to celebrate, but we do have a lot of work to do in the Second Amendment, guys. There's this whole thing that sometimes we get easy and we just back off of things. And, uh, you know, especially in a time uh, where people are going to continue to try to attack the Second Amendment, they're just going to find it a whole lot harder to do that under this new standard. So celebrate, enjoy the weekend, you know, put some libtard tears in your beer and old Hank, Hank Sr. there, and uh, enjoy yourself some good beverages, but be ready for the fight come Monday. And uh, guys, you know, given that uh, Roe v. Wade was just overturned, uh, it is one of those things where we gotta be thankful for that. And the leftards, the violent, radical communists out there, they're gonna try to push this. Uh, maybe time to exercise that Second Amendment against violent seditionists uh, that don't respect the court. You got douchebags out there like Keith Oberman saying that it's time to abolish the Supreme Court. They're showing their true colors. When they don't get their way, they want to abolish the government, right? It's these, it's these people uh, that, that don't think that they want to get rid of one third of the constitutionally uh, put into, act, like, they want to get rid of one third of our government, the judiciary branch, because they didn't get their way. So they're showing their true colors, but that's why we have a Second Amendment. And there's nothing that they can ever do moving from this point forward that'll ever prevent people from keeping and bearing arms. And ladies and gentlemen out there, I've told you a million times, you've got to meet oppression and tyranny with courage. You have to meet it with steadfastness. You have to meet it with poise and you have to meet it with valor. And that's one of the reasons why we do what we do here is to enable and empower other people to meet that tyranny, those oppression, those mentally unsound people, those violent criminals out there. People like Keith Olbermann that want to abolish the judiciary. People like Congressman uh, Mondaire Jones that wants to pack the Supreme Court, change the Senate, all that stuff. That's why we have a Second Amendment. And that's why the, the people are the ones that uphold the Constitution. The people. We the people. And that means we the armed people of the United States that took oath to support and defend the Constitution. And I'm thankful to God that the Supreme Court did just that. If you found the information in the video helpful, subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media, that link is down below. And if you wanna learn how to exercise your Second Amendment, become proficient, well-regulated means in good working order, coming out to Valor Ridge, and we can do just that for you. This is Reed Hendricks at Valor Ridge reminding you, the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the Ridge.